Hi, I got another fun 3D print project for you. I was on Thingiverse the other day and I saw username Tetralite had produced 3D models of microchip pick microcontrollers. Plastic little 3D prints of the actual microchip size, the actual size of the chips. Well, that was interesting to me because I you know, wrote the book Programming Picks in Basic, which uses an 8-pin microchip pick, microcontroller. And it's, it's been a fairly popular book. In fact, the company Haltronics.com put together the parts for this and sells the complete parts kit, which includes a little bare breadboard. So then the wheels started turning, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I could take that 8 pin design that in 3d print and blow it up and put a breadboard on top which is what I did so I made this one with the breadboard like inserted there's a slight insert but then I realized I have a whole bunch of plastic here that's not being used what if I carved that out and made space for all these parts and that's this design here where I designed it with four little posts to hold the breadboard but space to put the parts inside. I'm going to show you how to build this on today's episode. So the first step is I open Tinkercad and then I click on choose file to open the file that I downloaded from Thingiverse. I open that file and it appears here on the screen and then I click on import to bring it into Tinkercad. So the next step is to bring in an object, in this case a box, to represent the breadboard. Now I've already measured the breadboard, so I have those dimensions. So I drop a ruler tool on there and then I can change the dimensions of the box. So I'm going to go 83 millimeters on the long side, 55 millimeters on the short side, and then 11 millimeters high for the height of the breadboard. I now have a block that represents the breadboard. So I already resized the chip so it would fit the breadboard. And then I placed the breadboard on top of the chip. And now I'm going to change that to a hole so it'll actually take away material on the top of the chip. Now I need to resize the breadboard so I take away more material for the part storage. I'll set it to 36 millimeters and 33 millimeters off the platform. That gives me about a three millimeter bottom. Now I'll rotate it so I can see it from the top. And I'll draw a selection box around it so I select all the pieces. Then I'll go up to the upper corner and I'll select group. This will group everything together as one part. Now I need to make the posts that the breadboard will sit on. So I make them 23 millimeters tall and 33 millimeters off the platform and they'll be 8 millimeters by 8 millimeters square. Now I've already made copies of that one post and I've placed one at each corner inside the parts area. So two at the back and then if I scroll out here you can see two at the front. Now I want to make this whole unit into one object. So I draw a selection box around it and once again go up to the group selection and group them together. The design is complete so now I need to get the STL file. So I go under the design menu and select download for 3D printing. When I click on that I choose the .stl output. I click on there and then the file will appear in the lower left hand corner. Now I import the .stl file into the XYZWare for the DaVinci printer. First I want to rotate it 180 degrees so the top of the chip will end up on a platform. But it ends up below the platform. So then I click on the move and the land option to bring it back up. Now it's flat on the platform and that's the position I want it. Now I'm going to use the export feature to create the G-code file that will get sent to the DaVinci printer. I'm going to select the excellent quality. I want to make sure that raft and supports are both selected. 
Now if I clicked on export I could get the file right here. But let me show you what we're getting for the advanced settings. Excellent will give us a 30% fill, a 0.2 millimeter height for the layers, and standard shells and standard speed. The density for the support will be low so it's easy to break away. Now I click on export and it'll create the G-code file for the DaVinci printer. Once the slicing is complete, I can now save the file that I'll send to the DaVinci printer. And here's a picture of the finished unit with all the supports and everything in place. Now I'll send it to the printer. Okay, so now the print is complete. It's got a bunch of support structure that's been printed as well that I need to break away and clean this thing up. So let's get it off the platform. I think it's probably going to be pretty loose. If I just kind of, yep, it's loose. See, if, if the glue isn't too uh, sticky, it'll come right off. But now we've got the finished unit and I've got a bunch of support structure and, and that to remove. So I'll work on that next. Now a lot of the material can just be cut away by using an X-Acto knife. You know where the good edges are, so you just kind of slice along those edges. And it, it'll pretty much break away because that's the way the support structure is designed. Then you get in there and just start pulling it out. And then on the sides where the pins are, most of this is easy breakaway. You can use your finger for most of that. So why don't I finish breaking this away and then we'll move on to the next part of the project. Okay, once you've got all the plastic removed and all the supports pulled off, you want to take just a little bit of sandpaper and clean up the edges. This is ABS plastic so it can handle it. Just smooth out the edges, especially where the breadboard is going to go so it can slip in there easy enough. So now when I designed the hole for the breadboard, I didn't take into account these little nubs that are on the side that help it lock together multiple breadboards. So I'm going to use just a pair of side cutters and I'm going to just clip those right off. There's one on each side and a shot in the dark. Look out. So now that those are uh, cleaned up, we're ready to try it for a fit. Fits good. I won't push it all the way down because I'm going to fill it up with the parts. Take the bag of parts, drop them in place, plenty of room. I could even put the programmer and the chip axe module, which has the little microcontroller, put those in there too, but I'm going to keep them out because I want to try it. I'm going to put the breadboard on. Now I can plug in the little chip axe module. Connect the programmer. It's a PicKit 2 clone programmer. It plugs right into the USB port on my computer. And then I can run the programs that are here in my book. So now that we're all set, I'll take the programmer little module off. Pack it all up. It's ready to be packed up for another day. So that's it. That's my breadboard project on a little 3D printed chip. If you want to build one of these for yourself, I got the link for the .stl file right down below in the description. So there you have it. And if you're interested, check out my book, Programming Picks and Basic. It's available on Amazon.